Hey everyone, Budget Nerd here inside of the Mustang. Uh, since there's a ton of reviews coming, I kind of have to maximize my time. I thought maybe I'd do a little bit of recording in the car. So in this video, we'll be reviewing the Van Top Moment S6. It comes in uh, on Amazon currently potentially around 160 to 180 depending on whether or not you use the the coupon or not. Not sure if you can see that. Anyway, so we'll be talking about it a little bit uh, in this video, reviewing it, of course, completely unbiased, uh, and checking out and see if it's any good. So uh, let's do the intro, and then we can get to the unboxing, and then we'll come back. Meet the Van Top Moment 6S. Van Top eventually got one to me. It will shoot up to 6K at 60 frames per second. We'll do 8X slow motion, has stabilization, dual screens, an external mic. We'll shoot pictures in the RAW format, has Wi-Fi for connecting your phone with the camera, uses USB-C, and has a watch you can use to remotely control some of its functions. The camera comes with this protective case that allows you to record underwater. Inside this tube, you get all the typical connectors and adapters and straps, etc., that these cameras generally come with. You get a USB-C cable, two 1200 milliamp hour batteries, and a microphone as well. Here's the watch. You get an option to toggle Wi-Fi, turn the camera off but not on, use burst mode, start or stop video, and take a picture all from the watch. The watch looks nice, and it's actually a pretty decent quality, but it's not waterproof. You will need to pair the watch to the camera, and the instructions to do so are in the manual. It will support up to a 128GB microSD card. It slides and clicks in right behind the battery door. Here's a quick shot of everything that it comes with. Alright everyone, thanks for tuning in. Budget Nerd here by the way, working on my quarantine beard like everyone is doing, it seems. At least everyone I know. Um, I decided to do things a little differently in this video. Uh, mostly just because it's an action camera. You're meant to do stuff like this. Throw it on your dash, uh, you know, film what you're doing, capturing what's going on in your day to day. Well, right now I'm driving to work. So, and as you may guess, it's being filmed by the camera. So you can see what kind of quality it's like. Also this microphone, you can see how it sounds. Hopefully it's working. This is what my studio mic sounds like. You've heard it many times, which of course is much better, but serves as a good comparison. The external microphone does sound good enough as long as it's quiet, but when the noise level rises in the car, the audio starts to clip and not sound so good, which is unfortunate. Back to past me. It's a pretty tiny little action camera. It's about the size of a GoPro. Uh, it's got a dual screen, so the back screen, it's a uh, touch screen. It, it was mostly responsive. I think it may do a little better when I pull off that protective peel. Uh, it also has a front screen. It's not touch screen. It's just really, really tiny. It kind of shows you the battery status. It shows you how long it's been on. It shows you the length of the recording, so you can kind of see from the front that it's still actually recording, which is good. I have another action camera that sometimes you never know. You start it, and then who knows it's got one of those uh, watches that you can uh, remote control it but if the screen's off you press the button then the screen comes on you think you've stopped the recording but you haven't uh, and so on and so forth so this is really nice to have the front screen boy this car behind me is really close and inching closer I wish him luck <laughs> taking a closer look at the camera you can see the waterproof cover has two buttons one for the power button and one to take a picture or start a video. The touchscreen is not usable when it's in the water case, but you can connect it to your phone via Wi-Fi and control the extra features when it's in its water case and not in the water. The app you can download is called Moment. It will let you remotely control a lot of the aspects of the camera. It took me a few tries to get it connected, but once I did, it was pretty slick. We shot a few videos and pictures in our 28-year-old hot tub that I just fixed. Yes, I'm bragging. Once it just went a few inches underwater, the phone lost Wi-Fi connection with the camera. Just set it up how you want it before you go underwater with it. We got a few cool shots with it underwater, even a slow-mo shot of the jet. 
it was a lot of fun. On the front, you can see the screen we already talked about. It has a speaker on the top and two microphones built in. The external microphone sounds a little better and plugs into the USB-C port. It's simple, functional, and I think it looks nice. You're able to use it when charging, but not when it's plugged into a computer. It's easy to swipe right or left to change it from photo to video mode and back. The manual is pretty helpful, and it also lets you know that the camera is ticklish and that it is a bit of a pyro. The camera looks nice, and it feels like it has some good weight to it. It has a soft rubber finish feel to it. The back touchscreen takes up the whole back part of the camera almost, and it's nice to have a touchscreen since we're all used to them these days. The power button's on the right side. Once on, you can see the icons on the screen that allow you to control it. On the lower left is the option to review videos and pictures you've taken, change the resolution and frame rate, select the different modes, change the current mode options, and then the general camera settings. These let you use the digital zoom, and along the top is your basic information. By default, it will break the video clips up into 5 minutes, but that can be increased up to 20 minutes. This might be by default, so you don't lose all your videos in case the recording is interrupted. The various modes include video, video time lapse, slow motion, photo, photo lapse, burst mode, and two more modes which you can access by scrolling down, video plus photo, which will take video but also take photos at certain intervals, and car mode, which just automatically starts recording when you turn it on. Enough blabbing now, let's get to the pictures. Pictures are generally really good, as long as you have enough light. This 4x3 aspect artificially dates these pictures, and the fisheye effect is something I've never liked. All of this can be corrected in the settings though. Change it to 16x9, it looks much more modern. But you do lose some resolution. It drops to 8 megapixel, so it's basically just cropping it for you. You can also turn on distortion correction, and the fisheye is gone. Just my personal preferences. The contrast looks good in most of these pictures. The rare picture, though, just doesn't turn out quite right. This water tower picture, for example, the wide angle of the lens made the water tower look much smaller than it really was, and the focus is a bit off. This light pole is digitally zoomed by the camera, and it's a bit fuzzy and the sky is a little noisy. In another example, I couldn't get the camera to focus on this rose. Overall, though, I do think most pictures look great. Also, photos taken by the photo time-lapse mode you have to put together yourself in post. The video also has some fisheye effect. If you want a wide field of view, then it's a positive thing, but you can turn on distortion correction for video as well. You can change the resolution and the frame rate, with a frame rate as high as 240 frames per second at 720p. Options are good, and these videos and pictures of downtown Meridian look great. The same thing goes for video. If you have light, the videos are actually really good. These videos of our 4th of July fireworks actually turned out pretty good for being in the dark. The video time lapse is really cool and works well. Here you can see me walking without stabilization. And here's the same trip with stabilization on. Side by side, you can see that the stabilization does a decent job at controlling the movement in the video. When you turn on stabilization, distortion correction, and a few other options, it will limit you to 4K at 30 frames per second. Even the video of my large, three-legged cat turned out okay, even if she is a little awkward. Here's a quick comparison of the low-light video. We'll be walking upstairs to my small dark hallway. Darkness is scary, but let's do it for science. On the left we have my cheap $50 action camera, middle is the Van Top Moment 6S, and on the right is my Pixel 2 XL. You can see on the left, the cheap camera fails to take in any information in the dark. The Moment 6S does respectably, but it's not superb. There isn't a ton of detail, and the video is pretty noisy. The Pixel 2 XL does better, but it's still fairly grainy. Overall I think it did decent but not super. However, you be the judge. For those of you who think all this looks a bit familiar, you would be correct. 
This is a rebrand of the SJ Cam SJ8 Pro with some improvements. According to the manual and the internet, based on what I could find, the Moment 6S has a newer Sony sensor new, and a newer chipset, and will hit 60 frames per second when the SJ8, I think, could only hit 30. Let's spend a few minutes on some things I didn't care for. The microphone quality, as mentioned, is okay, but if there's a lot of ambient noise, then the sound starts to clip and the quality really suffers. The Mustang's not too loud. The touchscreen is a great thing to have, but sometimes we'll register a touch when you don't want it to, and this slide up or down to select a setting is very clunky. There were rumors of a few glitches and the audio going out of sync when shooting in 4K, 60 frames per second, but I never saw any of those issues, so that's a plus. Overall, I do like the camera. Priced at 160 to 180, I think the price is good. It's cheaper than the SJ8 on Amazon, and it's more camera than any other you'll find under $100. I would consider it if you're looking for a good mid-range budget camera. You be the final judge though. Tell me what you think in the comments. If you want to grab one, there's a link in the description. Thanks for watching.